Hey, my name is Josue Morales, and I'm going to be explaining the reasoning behind the balance struck by the grant of exclusive rights for a limited time to authors. I'm also going to be speaking about uh, two works that are currently in the public domain and two that are currently copyrighted. Um, I believe the reasoning behind uh, the grant of exclusive rights for a limited time to authors is to give them a moral rights. Um, th I believe this besides the fact that it provides them money, it also gives them originality, um, exclusivity, and you know the moral rights to actually uh, use their work for anything they want, the artist wants, or anything the person who has the ownership of the copyright. Um, I believe that uh, exclusive rights were made for a certain reason and that it is a positive thing um, because if not, uh, maybe people would just be going around and stealing other people's work. But um, I believe exclusive rights is a good thing and, and it actually gives uh, the author more flexibility and avoids a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, other people copying your work and saying that it was theirs and basically that. Um, the public domain, uh, according to Wikipedia, is uh, intellectual property rights that have expired, been forfeited, or are inapplicable. Um, I believe the public domain is also a great thing um, because these artists who do have the ownership of these copyrights, um, they eventually, you know, die or, you know, uh, want to forfeit it. Or actually, there are artists that just want to give it directly to the public domain. Anything they write or, or anything they do, um, it's not necessarily artists always want to make money off of what they do. Sometimes it's to raise funds, or sometimes they have different reasons or purposes. So I also believe that the public domain is actually a good thing. Um, sometimes it could be a good thing for the artists and sometimes it could be a good thing for the public in general because the public in general um, can actually use and usually remix, sample these uh, these songs or these works that have been done. Um, the public domain, I believe, is also good for the artist because currently um, for a song to be in the public domain um, it would have to be the life of the author plus 70 years so I mean that gives exclusivity to the author itself to have the rights during his whole life and 70 years after and basically I believe after those 70 years I believe that's more than enough to uh, to protect the author. Um, so the two works that I did pick uh, that are in the public domain, um, one is a song called Anytime by Herbert Lawson. It was uh, copyrighted in 1921. And the reason I chose this song was because originally, I mean, when I looked at the public domain list of songs, um, I saw this song and I remember hearing this song in the movie of Ray, um, when Ray Charles had uh, sang the song on a on a bus, I believe, um, and it was pretty interesting because, I mean, I didn't believe I would actually know songs that were in the public domain, so that was pretty interesting. And I believe uh, this song uh, is in the public domain because uh, the author Herbert Lawson. Um, Besides the fact that there weren't that many uh, exclusive uh, copyright laws, I mean, for a long extension, for a long period at this time in 1921, um, he also actually went to jail, I read on the internet. So this also prevented him, uh, prevented him to renew, actually, the copyright and... Um, so he lost that and that fell into the public domain, which also I believe it's a good thing because um, the public actually gets to use this song and um, 
I personally do like the song a lot, and uh, the song is really old, so actually, for being a really, really old song, I believe it's been used a lot. I actually found on Wikipedia that it was used more than 50 times by different artists, so if I had a song and I wrote it, I believe I would... I wouldn't feel bad at all if 50 artists in the world, famous artists, would actually sing my song all over again and, you know, present it to the world more than 50 times. Um, The second song I picked was A Pretty Girl is Like a Melody by Irving Berlin. It is a 1936 song. Um, Again, uh, this song also fell in the public domain because... uh, Basically, it wasn't uh, re-copyrighted, I believe. Um, so, I don't know if that's the correct term, but uh, basically, they didn't they didn't um, pay for the copyright again. So, um, that's why this song fell in, and um, I believe it's also pretty good for the public. I mean, it's not good for the artist because I don't believe this artist uh released a lot of songs after this song so it's kind of one of his exclusive songs but at the same time um um i mean it's it goes both ways um one of the songs actually the two songs that i did pick for the copyrighted songs one of them was stand by me by benny king um i believe a lot of people know what this song is and the reason why i actually chose this song was because this is a i believe it's a perfect example because it's a song that is copyrighted but it's actually a really old song that is currently still copyrighted so they kept it updated and I mean, this song has been remixed, uh, reinterpreted covers by so many artists. Um, I I lost count on Wikipedia. I tried to count. I think I've reached to 75, and there were still more artists. And um, actually, I really like this song because the last person who interpreted it um, actually did it in a unique style, which is uh, bachata and um it's prince royce and he was actually doing it to to raise funds for hurricane katrina so i believe that is a great thing um and it's a song that's not in the public domain but still um it's a it's a uh, pretty pretty interesting fact that a song doesn't necessarily have to be in the public domain for it to become a big sensation and to help you know um to serve for good things, because I believe uh, Benny King actually gave out this license for free to Prince Royce. Um, the second song I chose was uh, Will You Still Love Me, which is also published in this year. Um, or, I mean, the song was originally written by Gary Goffin and Carole King, and it was done way back, um, I believe, in 1936. And this song also has uh, about 70 artists that also redid and remixed this song. So this is another perfect example um, of how your song can still be copyrighted being a very, very old song. And, and currently there are still artists that are actually making covers of this song. Because, I mean, it seems like these that these artists actually did do a great job writing these songs and and they were very original and they were very exclusive and they still since they do have the copyrights of these songs they still have more rights to them and they're still making money off of them so at the same time um i believe it goes both ways um i don't believe it benefits one person more than the other only maybe if it's in the public domain because i mean the author also has no more rights to it but um again i say i think it goes both ways so um thank you for listening and i appreciate it